Okay. Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off. This probably won't take too long. Uh, so we went through the six different shapes of bone. Actually, you could give me seven if you include pneumatized bone, remember? Um, so let's keep on going. The average adult has 206 bones. Uh, sometimes you can have little extra sesamoid bones or sutural bones or sometimes even a big irregular bone. I've, I've actually seen an x-ray of a L6 vertebra. I had a whole extra lumbar vertebra. Um, so anyway, uh, now then, we've talked about the two types of bones, spongy and compact. Now we're going to talk about how bone develops. So two mechanisms of bone development. It's also called bone ossification. So you have intramembranous ossification and endochondral ossification. So intramembranous, think flat bones of the skull, they use this. Endochondral ossification, think long bones, uh, humerus, radius, ulna, stuff like that. So they were cartilage once upon a time and then they turned into bone. So both of these types of ossification start out with stem cells and the question is did the stem cell just go straight into osteoblast like it does in flat bones of the skull which would be intramembranous ossification there's other places that happens too but that's that's a good example or did the stem cells become um chondroblast basically and then Basically, you make a little cartilage model of the bone to be. So basically that radius or ulna or femur or whatever, you know, some of these long bones, um, they were all cartilage at one time. And then the cartilage basically dies off most of it and it's replaced by bone. So we'll go into these two different types of development. So this is just photoshopped in and it's showing you where intramembranous um, ossification occurs like these flat bones of the skull and then endochondral see they went in red um, don't get confused the ribs and the sternum Te technically those are flat bones but they do endochondral ossification so just because a bone is flat like a flat bone of the skull doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it did intramembranous ossification. So I'll be real specific. I'll go flat bones of the skull, like a frontal or a parietal or whatever. Um, frontal or parietal. Um, they do intramembranous ossification. True or false? And you go true. And make sure you spell it intra, I N T R A, because that means within. Okay? Uh, intramembranous ossification. So within basically the dermis is where this is happening. Where endo means inside and chondral means cartilage. Uh, so just anytime you see that word chondro, think cartilage, okay? So let's take them one at a time. Intramembranous ossification. Um, so during growth, the bone tissue replaces the connective tissue proper, which would be the dermis. So the clavicle, the patella, and some of the skull bones develop this way. Uh, I'll be real specific. I'll just go uh, flat bone of the skull, <laughs> right, so that you won't get confused, okay? Um, it causes appositional growth, so that's just in all three dimensions. It's not doing it from epiphyseal lines. That's a different kind of growth. Um, and so this appositional growth increases the width of the bone along the surface. Okay, now this is a long bone. Now we're just talking about growth here. We're not talking about how it developed. But you see the way this is getting bigger around, bigger around, bigger around? That's appositional growth. Whereas if it's growing long ways from the epiphyseal uh, plates, then that's interstitial growth. Okay, so that's just how does bone grow. Don't don't get too hung up in that. So now we're back to a flat bone of the skull. How is it ossifying? So the mesenchymal cells, that's all these guys. It's kind of busy. Normally it doesn't look quite this busy. But this is stem cells basically out here. And then they can just become 
an osteoblast, kind of like what's going on here, and it starts putting out its bony matrix. And then other ones start doing it, and eventually you'll end up with a spicule. Okay, and those spicules form these trabeculae. And uh, so trabecula is the same thing as a spicule, trabeculae, AE. That's a bunch of them interconnected to make your spongy bone. Um, um, and don't forget, it's nothing magic about spongy bone. It, it could develop either through intramembranous ossification or endochondral ossification. This is just a type of bone. Okay. So if this was under a slide, so I'm, I don't want you to get confused. It is a little bit of a uh, little bit of a. Uh, semantics here basically so uh if i point at this i go what is that what type of bone is that and you would go spongy bone because it's a spicule how is this bone developing and you would go hmm look at all these stem cells around here intra membranous ossification okay because this is early on this is really early on no bone marrow is formed nothing of that sort but as it matures then you end up with a bunch of spongy bone. And then towards the outside, you can't see it here, would be compact bone. So spongy and compact have nothing at all to do with how did they develop. It doesn't matter which way you develop. Endochondral versus intramembranous, you still end up with spongy on the inside, for the most part, and then compact on the outside. Okay, so don't get the terminology confused. Here's a long bone. Uh, this is endochondral ossification so what's happening say act like this is a what would that be a femur it looks like it's a little bitty femur and a fetus so it's all made out of cartilage at first right so the stem cells some mesenchymal cells they didn't become bone at first they became chondroblast okay so then in the middle of the little bone to be it's not a bone yet it's still all cartilage the chondrocytes remember they have a lacuna they swell up and then the the cells that are inside the lacuna the chondrocytes they die okay so see this so right where that first starts happening bone is going to develop right here how do the cells get there to make bone? Well, they're, they're brought in from the outside from these blood vessels. We're not going to get that deep into it because it's uh, it's a little bit complicated. So um, for our purposes, let's just say it brings in osteoblast. Technically, I think it's bringing in a precursor to that. Uh, hold on, I'm going to pause this. Okay, I'm back. Um, so yeah, so this will be the primary ossification center. And then basically the same thing starts happening on the ends, and these would be secondary ossification centers. So the, the chondrocytes swell up and die on the ends, and then look, the blood vessels bringing in, for our purposes, osteoblasts to kind of take over this territory and turn that into bone. So the cool thing is, look at here. Once it's said and done, you still have cartilage here. That's your plate. A lot of people call that the growth plate because the epiphyseal plates are you know the way a bone grows you know this way long, long lengthwise um and so in a young person teenager you know your the bones are growing not only appositionally which would be around but also interstitially which would be lengthwise and so <clears throat> then as you finish growing uh the epiphyseal plate becomes an epiphyseal line okay it still might be a little bit of cartilage in there um but now basically it's just a line okay and then on the ends of the bone see the articular ends that ends up being cartilage okay because that's where it articulates with other bones and you don't want bone to bone contact so you need some cartilage you know, kind of like a little shield there. Now, don't confuse that with the periosteum, which is the connective tissue around the bone. Okay, so it's uh, mainly it's collagen with a little cellular layer under it. It's not over the ends because that's cartilage. Okay, 
but periosteum is around the bone. Peri around osteum bone. Okay? So endochondral ossification, that's what we were just talking about. So during growth, the bone tissue replaces hyaline cartilage. Uh, bones inferior to the uh, clavicle, as a general rule, develop this way. Um, not the patella, that's the sesamoid bone. Uh, but I'm not going to even get that picky. I'll be very specific. I'll, I'll show you a long bone, like a humerus. Let's say, what type of ossification did this use? And you'll go, endochondral. I'll show you a frontal bone or a parietal bone of the skull. I'll go, what type of ossification did this use? And then you go, intramembranous. And so there's the way you spell interstitial growth. Remember, growth is just growth. It's how is it getting bigger. So appositional growth is growing in all three dimensions. Interstitial growth is growing lengthwise, you know, from uh, epiphyseal lines or plates, rather. Okay, so here's our basic outline for endochondral. The mesenchyme or the stem cells become chondroblasts. The chondroblasts become chondrocytes. And then you end up with a little cartilage model of the bone to be. Then you're going to get a swelling up of those chondrocytes in the middle. That's going to be your primary ossification center. Those chondrocytes die. Blood vessels grow in. And then in comes basically, for our purposes, uh, the osteoblast. And they turn uh, that area into bone and so this is everything we just said so there's the bone to be all hyaline cartilage here's the chondrocyte swelling up and dying right here comes some blood vessels and it's bringing in osteoblasts for our purposes here and then you have a primary ossification center well the same thing's going to happen on the ends and you're going to have secondary ossification centers right then, when all said and done, you'll end up with an epiphyseal plate, and then you're going to end up with uh, hyaline cartilage on the articular ends. So the bone's going to remodel. It's going to, you know, basically you're going to end up with spongy bone on the inside, compact bone on the outside. Okay? And don't forget, uh, you end up with periosteum on the outside. Uh, when you're reading in your book, just so you don't get confused, when you have a... Uh, a coating around your hyaline cartilage model they call it perichondrium and then once it becomes bone now you call it periosteum it's basically the same thing okay don't want you to get confused all right so there's our medullary cavity i call them marrow cavities okay? and so this is just showing you everything we just talked about primary ossification centers secondary ossification centers then you end up with spongy on the inside compact on the outside periosteum around most of it hyaline cartilage on the end and there's your epiphyseal line might be a little bit of hyaline cartilage in there okay the bone continues to grow after birth until the end of puberty long bones increase in length at a region called the epiphyseal plate and the tissue found here is hyaline cartilage. I guess if you live long enough, like 120 years old, I, I don't think there's any hyaline cartilage left in the plates or the or the lines. I think it all becomes bone if you live long enough. Um, but here it's kind of nice because you can actually see the plate, right? Um, and so this is just you know this is a femur and that's a tibia down in your lower tibia down in the lower leg, probably fibula right there. Um, and then it's, uh, we just put this here showing you how it's growing. I'm not going to get this picky, right? So this bone is growing in length, so that's interstitial growth. <laughs> like that's all this is trying to show you. New cartilage is getting put in here, new bones getting put in here. That's basically what that's trying to show. I'm not going to get that picky. Just know you're growing in length. And that's interstitial growth. If it's growing in width, that's appositional growth. Okay. Um, and so basically, once you're finished growing, it's not going to be a plate anymore. It's just going to be a line. So you can see it just becomes a line. And so that's pretty much you've quit growing at that point. All right. Uh, so a remnant of hyaline cartilage, known as the articular cartilage, remains on the ends. And you can see this like if you eat a piece of chicken like a, a chicken leg and you can look at the end of the bone there and it'll be nice and white and that's cartilage on the end <laughs> okay
Okay. This is just showing you um, in the hand here. Um, this is showing you um, appositional growth. So these carpal bones, see how they're tiny? Um, and then here they are in an adult field. So sometimes you can use this to kind of estimate how much growth a person has left to get left to go. So, you know, orthodontists that, you know, work on straightening teeth, they do this a lot. They'll take an x-ray of a, of a kid's hand and they'll look to see how far along they are as far as ossifying, um, as far as growing rather. And, um, they can kind of estimate how much their jaws are going to still grow from looking at these bones in their hand. It's kind of cool. And we've already looked at this, right? Okay, so hold on. Okay, so wait, where was I? Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so just remember, I'll keep it very, very simple. I'll go flat bones of the skull, develop by what type of ossification you'll go. Intramembranous, long bones, develop by what kind of ossification you'll go. Endochondral. All right, bone growth and regulation. I'm not going to get into this. You know, for you guys taking physiology, you might want to read over this slide. You know, about the vitamins A, C, and D, and calcium, you know. Uh, are very important uh, in this activity. Uh, stress, gravity, you know, it's really important to, you know, for bones to be under a certain load. Somebody goes up and lives in outer space on the space station for a year, they start losing bone density um, because they don't have gravity and it's hard to stress the bones. And they, I guess the osteoclasts kind of take over and they start losing uh, calcium. Anyway, I'm not going to go into parathyroid, calcitonin, and growth hormone. You, you get that in another course. Okay. Same thing here. I'm not going to ask you which ones build it up, which ones break it down. But for you guys taking physiology, check it out. Right. Um, fracture, I'm not going to ask you how steps of how a fracture heals, but this is just for you guys. Uh, uh, on this is FYI for your information. This is showing a member of bone as a living tissue, and there's the blood. And then, um, so you can end up getting what they call a callus, a cartilage. Uh, cartilage of the external callus is here. You know, it'll fill in, and then basically that'll end up getting replaced by osteoblasts. And then you'll end up with, you might end up with a bony callus, but a lot of times that will remodel over time and it'll get smooth again. Sometimes a bump stays, so probably just makes it stronger. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to ask you, well, maybe a bonus, you know, because you're going to see, we'll just do an easy one, like a displaced fracture where the ends are not, you know, approximated. Uh, that's going to need a cast or a pin, you know, a plate or a pin or something keep this in place and then I cast around it while it heals. So that's called a displaced fracture. If I show you that under under a slide, uh, this look on, on young kids, uh, you know, like preteens, early teens. Uh, a lot of times you'll see what they call a, a green stick fracture. So it won't break all of the way through. You know, like if you got a green stick out of the yard from under the tree and you try to break it, a lot of times it won't break all the way through. Uh, same thing on these young bones. Uh, but what you got to watch out for, be careful. Look on the other side of the little fracture and make sure it's not bent. That can happen. So I could show you that picture and go, this is a young, this is a 12 year old, you know, he fell off of his skateboard and takes this x ray and you see this. What kind of fracture is that? Just go green stick fracture. This is a more serious. Um, and so it's a epiphyseal fracture. So this is probably a young. You know, it could be an adult, but it's more likely to happen to somebody that's growing and they have all that cartilage in their epiphyseal plates and then it can totally displace like this. 
Uh, good news, bad news, bad news is it's a growth plate, right? You don't want to mess up your growth plate. Uh, good news is if you can get them back together really quick, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. They go right back into place. Then you put a cast on it or whatever. Uh, I'd never show you this x-ray. It's horrible. Um, but that's a compression fracture. So somebody uh, falls off the ladder. You can get compression fractures in your vertebra. Say they land on their butt. Uh, snowboarders get this sometimes too, falling on their rear end, right? But uh, very commonly, somebody falls off a ladder and they get compression fractures of some type or another. Uh, this is just general stuff, proximal epiphysis, distal epiphysis, diaphysis. Don't forget you got your uh, marrow cavity, you got your compact bone on the outside, you got your spongy bone on the inside. Articular cartilage on the ends that articulate with other bones. Don't forget these. Osteon is the structural unit of compact bone. There's the central canal or haversian canal. The rings would be the concentric lamellae. AE would be plural. Uh, A, lamella is one, singular. The little perpendicular cracks that radiate out from the central canal, those would be canaliculi. And lacuna, don't forget, bone has lacuna too. Um, that's where the osteocytes live. Okay. And that, if I say, what type of bone is this? You go, spongy bone. How did it develop? You can go, I don't know, because you, you're done. It's over. You got red bone marrow here. You got probably yellow bone marrow here. Uh, you don't see cartilage anywhere. You don't see mesenchymal cells anywhere. So there's no way to know simply looking at this spicule or trabecula. All you can say for sure is it's spongy bone, right? That's a tendon, by the way. See the way it looks like smooth muscle, dense regular connective tissue. It looks very, very much like smooth muscle. There's fibrocartilage. We've already seen that. I think that was on your last test. There's lacuna with chondrocytes in it. And here's your little... Uh, Collagen fibers stain blue. This is better. Same thing. Uh, fibrocartilage with a little lacuna with chondrocytes in them, and they stain the collagen blue, the, the collagen fibers. There's uh, intramembranous ossification. So this is probably like a flat bone of a skull. Right? See the mesenchymal cells everywhere, and it's that spongy bone, obviously. But you can tell this is ossifying by intramembranous because you see all of the uh, mesenchymal cells. Mesenchyme is just what you call the tissue that's full of mesenchymal cells. And this is a beautiful slide. And so you can see this is all cartilage. Looks just like hyaline cartilage that we've seen a slide of. Here, you know, it's going to be your growth plate. And here's where chondrocytes are swelling up and they're going to die. And then you can't see it, but there's blood vessels coming in here. And then you start making spicules. See the spicules? Now, I've never figured this slide out. I don't know if this is like a humerus and the secondary ossification center fell off of it. Or if this is like a, a tibia that kind of has this shape on the proximal side. And the secondary ossification center just hasn't formed yet. I don't know. But if you see this or something very similar... And I point and go, what tissue is that? And you go, cartilage, island cartilage. That's your big hand. What kind of ossification is happening here? And you go, hmm, looks to me like endochondral. So you're growing that way. The bone's getting longer that way, so that would be interstitial growth. That's just zoomed out, a little bit different color stain. But you can see the, con and we're zoomed way out, but you can still see the um, chondrocytes are swelling up and dying here. And then here's your spicules. and this is all cartilage. Okay, I'm not going to ask you these different zones. Don't worry about that. That's more like what I'm accustomed to. Beautiful spongy bone forming here. You can see this a long bone and this is going to be your growth plate. Right. Um, and here's where here's where the chondrocytes are swelling up and dying. So all of this is cartilage. Okay. And that's it. All right. I'll put this up on the uh, uh, YouTube for you. Okay.